Hello everybody and welcome back to another Oscar prediction video where today I will be taking a look at the category of best documentary feature film. Now please forgive me on how long it's taken me to get this video out. Uh, I've been under a lot of pressure obviously. I'm still sick. I'm still in the long long recovery phase from COVID and uh, hopefully this is not long COVID although uh, don't jinx me. Uh, but on top of that, my mom has also gotten it pretty seriously. So, and, and because we're in, we're, we're just two rooms apart and she's sleeping a lot, that means actually finding the time to record this is very, very tricky. Um, so probably what's gonna happen is I'm just gonna do a couple of videos gradually at a time and then right before the Oscars, it's just going to be a bunch of stuff coming out. So hopefully we get this out, but one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to try to not uh, take too long in these prediction videos. I'm going to try to be a little bit more decisive because I want to make the recording process as quick as I can. And I, I do apologize for that, but it's just sort of what has to be done given the circumstances. So with that said, best documentary feature, fifth most likely to win is A House Made of Splinters. So the summary for this one, children and staff in a special kind of home, an institution for children who have been removed from their homes while awaiting court custody decisions, staff do their best to make the time children have there safe and supportive. So this I've heard some good things about it. Unfortunately, it hasn't won any awards in the precursor and in the, in the, lead, in the lead up to this. And I believe this nomination was considered a surprise on the day. I think a lot of people had something else. We were assuming something like Moon Age Daydream would get on or Bad Axe. Ultimately ended up being this. And I think this is a well-liked movie, but because it feels like it's not one of the most well-liked documentaries of the year, and it really overall has felt like a little bit of a surprise factor in the race. Uh, because of that, because it hasn't had much of a factor prior to the nominations, I don't think this is going to get nominated. Don't, I don't think this is going to win. I want to clarify, I haven't seen this film. The only films in this category that I've seen are the top two, uh, which I know is a little bit frustrating, but it's been hard to get access to all of these. And with uh, me being sick recently, it's just it's just been hard. So with, with all that being said, I don't think this is going to win. Fourth most likely to win is All That Breathes. So the premise for this one, amidst Amidst the darkening backdrop of Delhi's apocalyptic air and escalating violence, two brothers devote their lives to protect one casualty of the turbulent times, the bird known as the Black Kite. So this one has a, a couple of wins, including the Gotham. It's the, it's the one that's focused on climate change, which is obviously a very, very important topic. And uh, it's get, been nominated at pretty much every major precursor, However, the fact that it hasn't taken home that many wins and it seems to have been overshadowed considering some of the other documentaries in this category, it seems like this is one that people like and has been stripped steadily a part of the conversation, but I just don't think it's going to be able to go all the way. Uh, and I don't really have much, uh, I don't really have, I can't really justify that opinion other than saying, look at what it's won and look at what it hasn't won and I think there's other things that there's other there's other documentaries in this category that have a stronger chance. Speaking of which, third most likely to win is All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. So this one follows the life of artist Nan Golden and the downfall of the Sackler family, the pharmaceutical the pharmaceutical dynasty who was greatly responsible for the opioid epidemic's unfathomable death toll. So it's funny because when this one initially premiered, there was so much discussion about, oh, this is your front runner, to the point where people were even talking about this one breaking into Best Picture. 
Um, but then this one surprisingly failed to get a nomination, much less a win, at the Critics' Choice Documentary Awards. And then it failed to get nominated for PGA, which was even more striking. For some reason, this one just doesn't feel as loved as it should be, which is weird because it has the most amount of precursor wins. It has 19 precursor wins, and it's obviously about a very important topic. So you, you would think this one would be contending, but why did it miss Critics' Choice and why did it miss uh, PGA? Those two misses mean I just can't take it that seriously as a contender, even though it feels like it should be winning. For some reason, I just don't think it's going to happen. Second most likely to win is Fire of Love. So the summary, intrepid scientists and lovers Katia and Maurice Kraft died in a volcanic explosion during the very thing that brought them together, unraveling the mysteries of volcanoes by capturing the most explosive imagery ever recorded. So this one is available to watch on Disney+. Plus. It's honestly pretty stunning, the imagery that this documentary got. Uh, the imagery of volcanoes is really extraordinary to look at, and it's also telling a love story on, on the same time. So I would not be disappointed if this won, and it did win a, pr a pretty sizable amount of critics' awards. However, I think the thing that's always held me back is the fact that almost all of the footage in this were taken by the couple who were not documentary filmmakers. In other words, it's almost all archival footage, which usually is a, a bit of a no-no because they want you to be able to film as much original footage for a documentary as possible. Now, to be fair, last year uh, they gave it to Summer of Soul, which was also a lot of archival footage, and that had me wondering, is this going to be our winner? And for the record, I think it's close. I think that Fire of Love is definitely the number two in this category, and I would not be shocked if it won. But the film that I'm placing my bet on, number one most likely to win, is Navalny. So the premise of this one, it follows the man who survived an assassination attempt by poisoning with a lethal nerve agent in August 2020, during his months-long recovery, he makes shocking discoveries about the attempt on his life and decides to return home. So of the two that I've seen, which is not a very wide margin, but still, I would prefer this one to win. This one, of course, considering where we are in the world right now with Russia and the Ukraine conflict and how most of the Western world seems to be vehemently against Vladimir Putin for very good reason, I think this documentary really captures uh, just the cruelty of Russia and just what went down and the lengths that Vladimir Putin will go to and the transparency of that evil. I don't know if this documentary winning would lead to any sort of real world change, but any the more people that see this, the better. This is, I think, the most important documentary here. and. It won BAFTA and it won PGA, which were late in the season, but I think those wins really, really helped it. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the fact that uh, it didn't really win anything else, BAFTA and PGA are literally the only two wins that it has, that's what makes me nervous. But I do think that this documentary feels very, very topical and feels the most important. And with those recent wins, I'm going to place my bets on it. I think it's the one that should win, and I think the director has an opportunity to give a very, very compelling speech when he accepts the award for this. So thank you very much for watching, and be sure to tune in next time when I will be taking a look at the category of Best Original Screenplay. See you then.